This video is all about how to bleed the air out of the cooling system of an Audi A4. This is a 1.8 turbo B7 shape. If you have air in the cooling system, your car will potentially overheat and you might find that you're only getting cold air out of the heating vents inside the car. You'll almost certainly introduce air into the system when you change the radiator, the thermostat, the coolant flange at the rear, and to get the air out of that system on an Audi is much harder than it looks. You cannot simply take the radiator cap off and run the car up to temperature and hope that you'll be able to get all the air out the system. It doesn't work like that with an Audi. In our particular case, this Audi worked absolutely fine around town. There was no overheating problem at all. It was only when we went high speed on the motorway up a hill and started putting excess load on the engine that you started to see the temperature gauge creeping up. And that is a sign that your radiator is failing and to get the temperature down, what you would do is turn the heaters onto maximum and you'd start to see the temperature coming down. You can also reduce speed, but that is a symptom of a failing radiator. And what we did is we got a garage to change that radiator because I didn't have time to do so myself. And on the way home, the car started massively overheating, engine coolant light on, oil light on, all sorts of things because they hadn't bled the system properly. Now, as an aside, if you do have a failing radiator or you have air in the system, an symptom of that apart from watching the temperature gauge on your car going up is that you may see that dreaded oil pressure light coming on sporadically because the oil is getting hotter than it should as it heats up it gets thinner and therefore the pressure drops so this video is going to be primarily concerned with an overheating problem when you've changed something and you know you've got air in the system we're not going to be addressing overheating which may be due to a head gasket or it may be due to a leak in the system whereby one of your sensors is leaking and drawing air into the system this is primarily if you've changed something on the car you've introduced air in the system how to get it out I'm going to start off with a couple of important do's and don'ts. First of all, this car takes G12 coolant. It's pink. Don't ever be tempted to mix green coolant, blue coolant or anything else. Use the proper G coolant. Some coolants, when mixed together, will start clogging and that may mess up your entire cooling system. So just use the correct coolant. The second thing to do, if you do have a leak somewhere on your sensors or radiators, do not use stop leak. This particular car here has very narrow channels in the engine. And if you use a stop leak product, you may end up blocking those channels. The final thing I'm going to say, which would no doubt cause a huge amount of controversy, is that the best way to bleed the air out of the radiator system is to do so when the engine is cold. In most cases, people tell you to bleed the air out the system with the engine running and up at temperature but in this particular case that may not work because of the way in which the heater core lines are actually attached to the water pump the water pump on this car is a centrifugal pump which means that it creates pressure by spinning and if you have that pump spinning when you're trying to bleed the system what you're doing is you're potentially introducing air into that lower section of the pipe and you don't want to do that you want to fill the system up first get all the air out before you turn it on so i'm quickly going to talk you through the process and then i'm actually going to do it because this car is overheating and i want to fix the problem the first thing to do is to take the radiator cap off or the header tank cap off the next thing to do is to take the engine cover off, re revealing on this hard pipe here a bleeder screw there, and you're going to undo that bleeder screw because that is how you're going to fill the coolant through that bleeder screw there and not through the header tank. And that will ensure that you have got coolant in the highest part of the lines here. That bleeder screw is exactly level with the maximum level of this tank here. Once you've filled the lower part of the system up through that bleeder screw, i.e. you're pouring coolant in until it starts dribbling out, you can put the bleeder screw back in. Next up, you're going to take this screw out here and you're going to remove this tank or at least jack it up. And in order to do so, you need to tilt it forward. So you might find that you temporarily have to put the cap on because sometimes if it's really full when you tilt it, you'll pour coolant out. But you just need to undo that screw there and there are two catches under there. The thing will lift forward and you just rest it back down where it was, but no, so it's no longer attached. Next up, we're going to pull this seal here off and then take out this piece of plastic trim 
so that we can get good access to this hose here. You're going to take this hose clip off, slide it down to here, and if you're very lucky, when you pull this pipe or twist it, it'll come off nice and easily. Um, and if you're not lucky, which you almost certainly won't be if it's never been off before, the video will show you how to get a stuck rubber pipe off. But you will slide that pipe back about an inch. And if you look carefully on that pipe, there's a little bullseye there and the rubber pipe has a hole in it. And you need to slide that pipe back far enough so that the hole is revealed to the air, but you don't need to take the pipe all the way off. So when that hole is revealed, you then lift this tank up as high as it goes. And what what you will see happening is you will see air bubbles coming out of that hole and a little bit of coolant and whatever you do don't drop the level of that tank whilst that hole is still exposed because if you do that you're basically pumping air back into the system with that tank elevated higher than the level of that hose you slide that rubber pipe back on closing the hole and then you can put that down and if need be repeat the process several times until you're just getting a clear stream of coolant coming out of that hole with no bubbles once you just have coolant coming out of that hole um, no bubbles put the whole thing back together again go for a drive with the heaters full on Make sure that you've got hot air coming out of there, both at idle um, and not just when you put your foot on the accelerator and make sure there's no overheating. And the next morning, you're going to take the radiator cap off when the engine is nice and cool, and you're going to top it up to the maximum level as required. And that should be job done. That's the theory. Now let's try and do this job in practice. In order to get to the bleed screw on the hard coolant line, you need to take this cover off. And this cover on this car is just held on by that one fitting there. You just turn it till it clicks and this should just pull straight up. It's just held on by two clips here and here. If you're lucky, it'll come off without cracking. You can see there are clips here and here on the hard coolant line. And this here is where the screw fitting goes in. And once you've taken that off, it'll reveal this bleed screw here. Now there should be a little um, slotted screw fitting on there but this is plastic and it's broken so you might be able to get a socket around there or a set of mold grip. What we'll be doing is replacing this fitting with a metal one and an allen um, socket on top of it because these have a tendency over time to break. Whenever you are undoing a fitting whether it's plastic or metal and it's really stiff my advice would be to go forwards and then go back and then try and put a little bit of lube in there don't just try and wind it out in one go because if you snap it, you'll be doing yourself a whole disservice. Eventually, if you are lucky, you'll get that loose enough so that you can actually undo it by hand. There you go. Give this little bleeder screw a squirt of silicon and make sure that it goes in nice and easily because ours was really tight when we got it out and what you're gonna have to potentially do depending on which method you use to bleed this system is be able to undo this so coolant comes out and then do it up again. We're going to take off this seal here and then we're going to take off this plastic um, trim panel here. Once you've got this clip back the challenge is to slide this hose but it's very very difficult to do and what I would suggest is you get some implement underneath um, the hose to separate the seal between that metal pipe and the hose. Don't wiggle it up and down, you'll end up damaging this fitting. If you're able to get an Allen key in there, you might be able to get some pliers on and start moving that Allen key around the seal. Once you've broken the seal, you'll probably find with a little bit of silicone spray that you can get that off. What I'm doing is just using an Allen key to make a little gap and then feeding through this hose here. Now this hose is just from one of the garden plant sprayers and I'm feeding that all the way down here. Then I'm going to attach some silicon spray to that and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get some silicon spray between the hose and the fitting which make our life an awful lot easier. That must have taken about half an hour to get that off. Do not rush it because if you damage this pipe by poking a hole in it or you break this fitting here, you'll regret it. Just be patient. Once you've got it off, 
wipe a little bit of silicon around the inside of that pipe and also on here. Now you'll find that this slips on and off nice and easily. And what you need to do when you're bleeding the system is not take the pipe completely off, just off far enough so that that hole there um, is revealed. And the way you can do that is just by dropping down a small Allen key or paper clip or something like that. And when it goes beyond the level of the pipe, you'll know that it's far enough over, just like so. So just make a note of how much you have to slide that pipe off. Just about that much there. The secret to successfully bleeding the air out of this system is to move this reservoir tank here above the level of the hole in that top pipe. So we're going to undo the screw here and this should just pull forward. And it's just held in by two clips. So you just tilt it forward and then out and we're going to jack it up. If you've never done this before, the back of this tank is just held in by those two plastic tabs there and you need to lift it, tilt it towards your head and then pull it back to get it out. As you lift this coolant reservoir up higher, you will notice out the top there, that you start to get coolant coming out of there. With this tank lifted up in the air, once you see a clear stream of coolant coming out of there, slide the pipe back on with this still suspended so you don't suck any more air into the system. Then put the hose clamp on and then test and repeat as necessary. Just a word of advice, if you don't have the correct hose clip clamps for this style of clip, you can use a set of pliers like this, but I find it's much easier to set, use a set of mole grips that are adjusted correctly because you can lock them into place. It makes moving that much easier than using this, which tends to keep slipping off. I'm driving up a notoriously steep hill in Bristol. Before when I did that, that temperature gauge would just shoot straight up. The last thing to test is that you've got hot air blowing out of these at idle. If you find that you've got only hot air coming out of here when you rev the engine or when you're driving at speed, then that means you've still got air in the system and you need to repeat the process. Once you're happy, you've got all the air out of the system, you need to let the car cool down and wait till the next morning and then check the coolant level. You obviously can't do it when it's hot because if you take that off now, you'll be covered in a spray of hot coolant. I'm gonna finish this video here. Um, still to do on this Audi is to figure out why our windscreen wiper reservoir keeps running dry. I've changed the gasket between the lower tank and the top tank. That's often where it leaks, but that's not the problem on this car. So I suspect it's something lower down. And then we have got to re-stick this window in, which is starting to come away. This is a hard, solid glass window on these Audis. You can see it's coming away there and also here. So we'll be showing you how to do that at a later date.